This is a video presentation of Percent Fat by SoxTech, Analytical Services Methods 5 through 10. Percent Fat is approximate analysis test that gravimetrically determines the fat content of a sample using extraction by petroleum ether, hexane, or other organic solvent of similar polarity. The percent fat by SoxTech methods described here are based on these official and manufacturer methods. These methods we refer to are suitable for meat products, feeds, cereal grains, forage, butter, yogurt, rapeseed, and sunflower seed. Before attempting this technique, it is mandatory to read the test method that applies to the sample type being analyzed. This presentation is simply an overview or a summary of determination of percent fat by SoxTech. The good laboratory practices associated with safety and personal protective equipment represented in this video are simply the safety requirements of the FAPC Analytical Services Laboratories. Furthermore, all samples received by analytical services are considered to be for testing purposes only and not for human consumption. Therefore, food safety and handling procedures do not apply. We urge you to determine what specific good laboratory practices and particular safety requirements are necessary for your own applications. Some of the recommended guidelines for good laboratory practices include maintain the integrity of the samples throughout the process by limiting exposure to air and non-suitable storage temperatures, wearing gloves when handling samples and items associated with the test to prevent cross-contamination. Oil, moisture, or any other material on bare hands can affect the sample integrity, thus resulting in inaccurate data. Always use tongs or gloves to handle the extraction cups and thimbles to avoid container contamination and weighing errors. Keep samples clearly labeled from preparation to disposal. Record observations at the time they are made. Work under the hood and wear safety glasses when using solvents. Exercise safety precautions at all times by using the specific safety supplies listed in the method. The necessary supplies for percent fat are Sealite 545, diatomaceous earth, not acid washed. Petroleum ether, hexane, or another required organic solvent for the sample type, ACS grade. Cotton batting, packaged in a roll. Fat extraction cups, aluminum. Wattman cellulose extraction thimbles. Boiling beads or chips small tongs, spatulas, individual thimble stand, individual extraction thimble holders, extraction thimble stand, optional extraction thimble loading rack, extraction cup loading rack, desiccator with dry right, Decatur Soxtech System HT1043 Extraction Unit, Decatur Soxtech System HT1046 Heating Unit, Brinkman WK230 Lauda Water Chiller, Fisher Scientific Isotemp Drying Oven or Equivalent, Analytical Balance, Gloves, Safety Glasses, and lab coat. Although there are no standard materials required for this analysis, the use of a control sample or a standard reference material is strongly recommended. The first variable that must be considered is the sample type to be analyzed for percent fat. This will determine the correct analysis conditions to be used for the extraction. Here is a chart with the method applications and test conditions. The analysis conditions, times, temperatures, solvents, and sample weights may be varied, as necessary, to correspond with similar official methods better suited for the sample matrix. Before a sample is analyzed, it must be properly prepared so that an accurate test result can be obtained. This is achieved by homogenizing the sample. 
Homogenization ensures that all of the sample material will be of consistent content throughout and suitable for analysis. For details, please refer to Preparation of Test Samples, Analytical Services Method Number 1. It is recommended that all samples be analyzed in duplicate or triplicate for accuracy and statistical analysis. Turn on the extraction unit and set the temperature to the appropriate temperature for the sample type or as needed. Allow the extraction unit to reach the set temperature. Turn on the water chiller and set the temperature to 10 degrees Celsius. Turn on the drying oven and set the temperature to the appropriate temperature for the sample type. Allow the oven to reach the set point. Place two or three boiling chips or beads in each of the labeled aluminum extraction cups. Use one cup per replicate. The unit will hold up to six cups. Place the extraction cups with the boiling beads in the drying oven and leave them for at least 15 minutes. Remove the extraction cups from the oven and place them in the desiccator. Apply vacuum and allow them to cool for 30 minutes. Place labeled thimbles in a thimble rack. Make sure all of the thimbles are clean and dry. Add two slightly rounded spatula scoops of sealite to each thimble. Place one thimble in the individual thimble stand and place both on the balance. Close the balance doors tightly and tear the balance. Before weighing samples, verify that they have reached room temperature. Otherwise, the measure weight will be inaccurate, making the percent fat value incorrect. Using a clean spatula, weigh the sample into the thimble and record the final weight. Place the thimble in the large thimble stand. Repeat this step for each replicate or sample. Add another spatula of sealite to each thimble on top of the sample. More sealite will be necessary for samples that contain a great deal of moisture. Using a spatula, mix the contents of the first thimble so that the sample is thoroughly saturated with sea light and as homogeneous as possible. After the sample has been thoroughly mixed, obtain a pinch of cotton to securely fill three quarters of the thimble. Wipe the spatula off as you pull it from the thimble. The goal is to remove any material sticking to the spatula, thus keeping everything in the thimble that was in it initially. After wiping down the spatula, place the piece of cotton in the thimble and use the spatula to push it down slightly, but tightly enough to secure the contents of the thimble. Place the thimble rack in the drying oven for an hour. After one hour, use a heat resistant glove and remove the thimble rack from the oven and allow the thimbles to cool. Obtain the thimble loading rack and place the thimbles in it keeping them in order so they can later be correlated with the sample weights and the extraction cup weights. Align the thimbles in the loading rack with the stopcocks on the fat extractor. Raise the loading rack until the metal tops of the thimbles are secured by the magnets inside the extraction tubes. Confirm the boiling, rinsing, and collection times for your sample type. One by one, Lower the black knobs on the extractor from the boiling position to the rinsing position. This should raise the thimbles from the loading rack into the fat extractor. If not, check the seal of the thimble with the magnet. Once all of the thimbles are raised, remove the loading rack and set it aside. Tear the balance and use tongs to remove one extraction cup from the desiccator to the balance. Replace the desiccator lid immediately. Record the extraction cup ID and the weight of the extraction cup. Remove the cup from the balance and place it in the first slot on the extraction cup loading rack. Be very careful to keep the cups in order since they must correlate correctly to the order of the thimbles. In other words, sample one is in thimble one, which is extracted into the first cup in the loading rack. Repeat the step for each extraction cup. After the cups have been weighed, add 40 milliliters of petroleum ether or other appropriate organic solvent to each extraction cup. Special precautions should be taken. Petroleum ether and hexane are flammable and inhalation may cause nausea. Work in a vent hood, wear gloves, safety glasses, and a lab coat.
Align the cups in the loading rack with the stopcocks on the fat extractor and set the cup loading rack on the metal plate. Lift the rack so that the tops of the cups fit into the ends of the condensing tubes. Holding the rack in one hand, push the arm down until it clicks into place with the other hand. At this point, the cup should be securely in place on the extractor. Ensure that the cups are in place and sealed by tugging gently on the loading rack and by attempting to turn the cups. The cup should stay in place and not move. If the cups move, reseat the cups by releasing the arm and quickly pushing it back down. The loading rack will remain on the extractor for the duration of the extraction. Turn the stopcocks to the vertical position if not done already. Lower the thimbles into the cups by raising the knob above each thimble from the rinsing to the boiling position. Wait for visible evidence of active reflexing in every condenser tube by observing the collection of solvent in the side arm of each tube. When every tube has begun to reflux, the timer can be started. Leave the thimbles in the boiling position for the appropriate amount of time for the sample type. After the boiling time is completed, raise the thimbles from the boiling position to the rinsing position by lowering the black knobs. Leave the thimbles in the rinsing position for the appropriate amount of time for the sample type. After the rinsing time is completed, close each stopcock by turning it from the vertical position to the horizontal position for recovery of the petroleum ether or other appropriate solvent. Wait the appropriate amount of time for the sample type for all of the solvent to be recovered. After all of the solvent is recovered, release the loading rack by holding the knob of the arm while pulling forward on the disc. Once the loading rack and the extraction cups are released, use tongs to place the extraction cups in the drying oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove the extraction cups from the oven and place them in the desiccator. Apply vacuum and allow the cups to cool for approximately 30 minutes. Remove the thimbles from the extraction unit and place them in the thimble stand. Obtain a spare extraction cup and place it under the first condenser tube on the extractor. Turn the stopcock to the vertical position and let all of the solvent drain from the condenser into the cup. Repeat the previous step for each condenser tube. If the solvent used is petroleum ether, pour it into the bottle labeled Recycled Petroleum Ether. After the extraction cups have cooled, follow the weighing procedure. Record the final weight of each cup. The first step in the percent fat calculation is to determine the weight of the fat removed from the sample. This is accomplished by subtracting the initial cup weight from the final cup weight. The final step in the percent fat calculation divides the fat weight by the sample weight and multiplies the value by 100 to convert it to percent. As an alternative to manual calculations, an Excel spreadsheet may be used. Here is an example of what a spreadsheet should look like. The sample IDs, container IDs, and weights can be entered as they are observed. With the correct calculation cells set up in advance, the calculation is completely automated and occurs as data is entered. Calculate the average of the replicates from the percent fat results. This will be the reported result. For the statistical analysis of the replicates analyzed, calculate the percent relative standard deviation, percent RSD. The percent RSD should not exceed plus or minus 5%. When applicable, the measurement uncertainty should be included with the result.